Step 4. Squeezed states. Let's talk about the Heisenberg uncertainty relations. It is a fundamental principle of nature that if you take some fluctuations of conjugate variables like x and p, then they have to satisfy the following um, inequality. The product of delta x and delta p have to be larger or equal to h bar over 2. We have been using uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in a slightly different form by using the position and momentum quadratures. Delta x1 times delta x2 is larger or equal to 1 over 4, where I remind you the quadrature operators are given by the following. x1 is equal to 1 half, over, uh, 1 half times a plus a dagger, while x2 is given by 1 over 2i times a minus a dagger. This is the position quadrature, and this is the momentum quadrature. And the Heisenberg principle, the uncertainty principle, is fundamental. It must be always um, obeyed. So this is always true, and this is always true for any state of light, any quantum state of light. And we have seen many examples where, uh, uh, where we computed the fluctuations. For example, the number states. We computed that in vacuum, the fluctuations in the position quadrature are equal to one half, and the fluctuations in the momentum quadrature are also given by one half. So their product is given is, to, is uh, one over four, is one quarter. If we increase the number of photons in our mode, for example, if we add one extra photon, we've got state ket1, then the fluctuations we computed increase. Delta x1 is equal to square root 3 over 2, and that is equal to delta x2. So their product is given by the following fraction, 3 quarters. So we see that the fluctuations are increasing as we are adding uh, uh, photons into our single mode. And for a general number state, this, the product of these sort of fluctuations is given by 2 times n plus 1 divided by 4. We also saw in the previous lesson that coherent states are uh, uh, states for which delta x1, the fluctuations in the position quadrature, are equal to a half, and uh, also the fluctuations in the, uh, the momentum quadrature are equal to a half. So the product is equal to one quarter. And we call states which saturate the Heisenberg uncertainty inequality, namely vacuum and coherent states, we call them the minimum uncertainty states. Now, Heisenberg uncertainty principle is always obeyed. We cannot do anything about it. But it is a statement about the products of fluctuations. In other words, it doesn't mention anything about the size of uh, delta x1 and the size of uh, delta x2. Only together they must satisfy a certain inequality. Furthermore, it doesn't say that those fluctuations must be equal. So in principle, we can think of a state for which delta x1, the fluctuation in the position quadrature, is arbitrarily small, provided that we increase the fluctuations in the momentum quadrature, delta x2, such that together they satisfy the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. In other words, that their product is always larger or equal to 1 over 4. Such states are known as squeezed states. We use the term squeezing because we think of them as having been squeezed in one quadrature while expanded in the other. So any squeezed state obeys the following, following uh, uh, un, um, inequality. Either its position quadrature is less than a half, or its momentum quadrature, fluctuations in the momentum quadrature, are less or equal to a half. So if we plot it in our argon diagram, in our phase space picture, where I remind you on the horizontal axis, we are plotting the fluctuations in dx1, and in the vertical axis, we are uh, plotting the fluctuations dx2. So this thick line represents all the states which saturate the Heisenberg uncertainty inequality. In other words, these are all the states for which, which are minimum uncertainty states. And we saw an example of those states in the form of a coherent state alpha. For, uh, for alpha, we computed that the fluctuations in the position quadrature are half, and that's equal to also half, which are the fluctuations in the momentum quadrature. So the coherent state lies over here. 
and the same point represents also our vacuum. And we saw that if we increase the number of photons, then we move up here. So this white square represents all the states which are not the minimum uncertainty states. In other words, states, uh, number states with, uh, um, which are not vacuum. So one, two, three, and higher. For number state one, we've got the fluctuations delta x1 are equal to square root of 3 over 2, and similarly for the position quadrature as well. So squeeze states are represented by this blue shaded area. Any state that can be found in, in this area has fluctuations in the position quadrature, delta x2, smaller than a half. Therefore, it's a squeeze state. But notice that the fluctuations in delta x1 in the position quadrature increase accordingly. Similarly, over here, if we squeeze delta x1, in other words, if we uh, squeeze the fluctuations in position quadrature below one half, we have to increase the fluctuations in the momentum quadrature. So let's go back to our phase space representation and see how squeeze states um, uh, are portrayed there. So again, we've got our diagram where on the horizontal axis we are plotting the average of the position uh, quadrature and on the vertical axis we are plotting the average uh, of the momentum quadrature. And we said that the vacuum state is a special case of a coherent state represented by ket0 so, uh, uh, and it has, a, it has an uncertainty relation of uh, delta x1 being a half and delta x2 being a half, represented by this shaded circle. Now, if we take this state and we squeeze it in the position quadrature, what we obtain is a cigar-shaped uh, object like this. So we are squeezing in the position quadrature. In other words, delta x1 is less than a half. But on the other hand, we have to expand the fluctuations in the momentum quadrature. So in this case, dx2 will be given by 1 over 4 times the fluctuations in the position quadrature. And this is known as squeezed vacuum. But we don't have to squeeze only in the position quadrature. We can just as easily squeeze in the momentum quadrature. Can you guess what we will obtain? The following cigar shaped, but now if we must expand the fluctuation in the horizontal direction, in other words, in the direction of the delta x1. So here, delta x2 is below a half, while delta x1 is given by the relations 1 over 4 times delta x1. Now, so far we've been squeezing vacuum. Can we squeeze other coherent states? Of course. Let's start with a general coherent state alpha, given by this green uh, uh, circle over here. And we can squeeze. Either we can squeeze in the position quadrature or we can squeeze in the momentum quadrature. But that's not all. We can rotate the axis of squeezing. In other words, we don't need to squeeze along x1 and x2. We can squeeze along an arbitrary angle. We can rotate the axis and then squeeze along this new position and momentum quadratures given by tilde x1 and tilde x2. But again, it will be a squeeze state only if the fluctuations in these new quadratures, delta x1, tilde is less than a half. While we must expand the fluctuations in the other uh, quadrature to satisfy the Hanselberg uncertainty principle. So, why are squeeze states important? It seems like so far we have been only been playing around with squeezing the fluctuations and obtaining different shapes in the phase space. In fact, squeeze states are crucial in quantum technologies and quantum information processing. In the previous module, we have been considering sources of entangled states of photons via the spontaneous parametric down conversion process known as SPDC. It turns out that if we write down the wave packet equation for such states, they are in fact squeezed states. So squeeze states are crucial in generating entangled pairs of photons. They play a very important role in quantum information processing as well. In the previous module, we have introduced the notions of qubits, 0 and 1. And often we think of them as two-level atoms, where 0 and 1 are represented by the excited and the ground states. But this doesn't need to have to be so. Using light to do quantum information processing, or using continuous variables, CVs, 
we need squeezing to generate entanglement. And uh, squeezing finds use in uh, continuous variable quantum key distribution, QKD, in computation, and in communication. And the last extremely important application of squeeze lights is in meteorology and in sensing, where we use the fact that the fluctuations are decreased in one uh, quadrature to do a very precise measurements. How does this idea work? Let's look at a very simple example of an interferometric measurement. Let's say that we want to uh, uh, measure the uh, oscillations of this moving mirror. And that corresponds to some signal of some quantity that we are trying to determine. So what we do, we use this setup known as the Michelson interferometer, where we have a coherent source of light coming from uh, the left uh, as our, uh, one of our inputs. And part of the light gets reflected uh, horizontally towards the mirror, and then gets um, reflected from the mirror and back towards the detector. While the other part of the coherent uh, light gets transmitted through the beam splitter, gets reflected from the mirror, and then gets uh, reflected towards the detector, where the lights combine, and we look at the signal. And we saw that depending on how far the mirror has moved, we can, uh, uh, we can witness coherent or destructive interference. And using this interference, we can make some measurements of the moving mirror. And usually what the signal from such a detector looks like is the following. Normally on the horizontal axis, you find uh, some frequency of the oscillations. And on the vertical axis, you see the signal power. And usually what you see, you have some background noise, or called the shot noise. And then you've got a sharp peak representing your signal, that at that value of the frequency, something happens. But what if this peak is very low compared to the shot noise? This is known, quantified, by the notion of symbol to noise ratio. If you have a very large peak compared to the value of your shot noise, you're fine. You can easily determine where your peak occurs. And you can measure its height, and you can measure its position in terms of the frequency. But if it's very low, it's very difficult to distinguish uh, whether you even have a signal peak. So what you do is you use squeezed vacuum as the input to the other mode of your beam splitter. And the squeezed vacuum, um, uh, squeezed vacuum introduces reduced fluctuations in your measurement process. What that, in turn, does it lowers the amount of noise that you are detecting to sub-shot noise level without affecting the signal. This means that you increase the signal-to-noise ratio. And what previously maybe was difficult to measure, in other words, where previously your signal-to-noise ratio was too low to make any, determin any deterministic statements about the measurement process, here, you increase the signal-to-noise ratio to a level where you can clearly see where your peak occurs and at what frequency it occurs. So squeeze states are extremely important in applications in terms of quantum technologies.